Today in this video, I'm doing a follow-up to a previous video, so this is kind of like part two. If you're interested in watching the previous video, you can click on the card right here, or the link in the description, or the end of the video. Um, in the previous video, what we were doing was seeing if we can get algae to grow in water that would already have been in the water. So that would include your tap water or the filter tap water here, as you can see, I have a tag. Um, obviously, the, uh, the distilled water shouldn't have any algae spores in it. And in the previous test, you can go ahead and, and watch that video and just kind of see what happened. But in this video, what we're gonna be doing is adding algae cells uh, from algae that I took from my fish tank and I infuse it into water. So what we're gonna be doing is actually adding about uh, a few milliliters worth in equal amounts to each one of these. Now, here we have the tap water. This is for the newcomers. I already explained this in the previous video, but uh, tap water, this is before my whole house filtration system, uh, so that it would actually have been chlorinated, uh, but it's been vented off and it shouldn't be any, there shouldn't be any more chlorine in it. Uh, filter tap water that's basically coming through my five micron filter and then through a carbon filtration system, which is quite large and it's uh, brand new media. And there's also a post filter for larger sediment. Uh, the remineralized distilled water is basically just the distilled water that was dumped into this bottle. And I've added salty shrimp GHKH plus, uh, throw it up on the screen if you wanna see what that is. And basically what the idea of this test is, is to see if we can grow algae that I'm adding to the water, if it will take hold with uh, nutrients and minerals that might be in the water already. This kind of goes along with how some people think if they use reverse osmosis water in their tank, uh, they're gonna get rid of their algae problems or anything kind of anything kind of like that uh, aside from using tap water. So what we're gonna do is put these containers under a lot of light after we add that in, uh, algae to the water and come back in about 30 days and see what happens. All right, it's been exactly 30 days now and I have some very pleasing results. I'm always happy to see when experiments kind of go the way I expect. And I'll show you that in a second, but first I wanted to mention what I didn't mention in the first part of this video was that these containers have all been sterilized. Uh, I washed them with star sand and then I put them in the oven for a few hours at 285 degrees. So they were completely sterilized before I did this experiment. So now we're gonna go in a little closer and kind of show you what's going on. And I apologize if the white balancing of the camera changes, I'm recording with the iPhone. Uh, but you can kind of see here in the tap water, you can see there's stuff growing on the bottom and it's gonna look a little different on a camera that does in person, but I can tell you that um, the bottom and the sides and everything, there is definitely algae growing on there in the plain old tap water. Um, looks like a little bit of a spot algae and I don't think the camera's gonna be able to pick it up too well, but you can definitely see that there's stuff growing in there. In the filter tap water, uh, there is definitely less, uh, but there is still a little bit of a haze that is growing on the glass, on the bottom and the sides and everything. Uh, not nearly as much, but it is it is still there for sure. There is definitely some algae growing on the glass. And then over here in the remineralized distilled water, uh, there is basically nothing growing on the glass. There's no haze whatsoever. Uh, in the bottom, the camera's not really gonna pick up too well, but there is little specks of what you probably can call like dead algae cells maybe. Um, but other than that, it's clean. And there's zero in the distilled container here. There's nothing in there whatsoever. Uh, so what I've been doing with these containers is I've been opening them up twice a week, doing an air exchange. Uh, it basically just takes like a straw and then you have a, um, a vacuum that sucks the air out of the container, which exchanges the air back and forth. You know how it works. <laughs> so anyways, um, what I did is I did that and then I shook it up uh, each one. I did that, like I said, twice a week. So that kind of keeps everything consistent, oxygenated, everything like that, just so it's not completely stagnant water. So now what we're going to do, now we determined that there is definitely a difference between these types of waters that we, you would use in an aquarium. We are going to add this right here, which is nitrogen. I'm gonna put about two milliliters in each container. And the reason why I'm doing this is because we've already seen that there is enough organics in tap water or enough minerals and nutrients for algae to take hold. Um, and the filter tap water, you can see that there is definitely less. And the reason why that is, is the same reason why you wouldn't wanna put carbon in a planet tank unless you're using something like Kimmy Pure Green. If you use Kimmy Pure Green, it doesn't remove the organics out of the water that the plants need. 
Uh, but when you're using a regular old carbon filter, you're actually re in, a, in a fish tank, you're taking the stuff out of the water that the plants need to grow. So that's why you're seeing less algae in the filtered tap water because it went through carbon. Obviously in the distilled water containers, there is nothing in there except for some minerals. Um, so there really is nothing for the algae to take hold in there as well. But in tap water, you also usually have a very small amount of nitrates. In the case of my tap water, uh, it's probably one to two parts per million of nitrates because uh, I can barely even see any color change when I run the test on my test kit. So in all aquariums, no matter what you do, you're going to have nitrates in your aquarium. So that's why we're gonna be adding in the nitrogen here to see what happens when we feed it, what really would trigger algae to start growing. And nitrates, high nitrates, are definitely going to contribute to algae growth, although nitrates alone won't necessarily make algae grow out of control. Uh, that is one of the key components. So we're gonna put that in there, come back in 30 days and see what happened. Okay, quick video interjection here. It's only been a few days and look at the difference already. Just by adding a little bit of that nitrogen, which represents the nitrates in your fish tank, you can see that the tap water and filter tap water are definitely very green. Let me get a little closer so you can see this. You can see the water's very green. It's definitely got more growing on the glass. Filter tap water, there is definitely a little bit less, uh, but still, it's still there, it's definitely noticeable. And I even see oxygen bubbles coming up from the bottom. The algae is actually producing oxygen. You can see the bubbles. We call that purling if it was plants. The remineralized distilled water, uh, I don't really see anything. I mean, there might be, might be a slight green haze on the glass. Um, it's really difficult to tell at this point. The plain old distilled water has pretty much, there's nothing, I don't see anything on that at all. Um, the remineralized distilled water, when I put the uh, minerals in there from the salty shrimp GHKH plus, uh, I put enough in there so there's about 230 ppm and my tap water itself is only 140 ppm roughly. So of that 140 ppm is not just minerals, there's heavy metals in there as well. And algae feeds off of heavy metals. So not just heavy metals alone, but there's a, just a mixture of everything. So when you add everything together, the nitrates, the heavy metals, mineral stuff like that, algae eats it. Um, this is why you're not seeing much of anything happening in the mineralized distilled water, because even though there's plenty of TDS in there, a lot of that is not heavy metals. And we had just put nitrogen in there and it still hasn't picked up any kind of growth. So like I said, nitrates alone isn't gonna cause an algae bloom but when you add other stuff to the mix, such as heavy metals, which is what tap water has, and also phosphates and stuff like that, that's how you're gonna get an algae bloom. It's just basically a, a perfect concoction. So I just wanted to kind of mention that because it's quite obvious. And before we get into the next segment, I wanted to make sure this was kind of documented here to see the progress in just a very short time. Okay, so it's been about one week since we have added the nitrogen to each one of these containers. And I can see that the algae bloom has subsided and it is no longer getting any worse. The remineralized distilled water has gained some algae, uh, but is not increasing anymore. It, as a matter of fact, it's about one third of the amount of algae that is in the filter tap water and the tap water. And the plain old distilled water has absolutely no algae growth whatsoever. It's not even the least bit green. And it's just like I said, nitrates or nitrogen alone isn't going to cause an algae bloom. It's the perfect concoction of everything else that's in there that causes it, such as your heavy metals, phosphates, and silicates. Um, silicates would be more for diatom blooms, but it's pretty much the same thing. If you have a lot of heavy metals in your water, that's going to definitely contribute to your algae growth. Um, so at this point, what we're going to do, since it's not going to be growing anymore as it is, and as a matter of fact, the color of the water, the color of the algae is kind of turning towards more of a kind of a lime green yellow color. And it's going to look different on camera than what I see in person. But um, at that point, it's going to be it's probably starting to turn more towards a brownish color. And that means it's going to be dying back. So at this point, what we're going to be doing is adding this uh, plant fertilizer. This is, this is Thrive S. This is for shrimp tanks. It just means it doesn't have any copper in it. Um, there's going to be 
very, very almost undetectable trace amounts of copper in the tap water, simply because it flows through uh, copper piping, for me anyways, depending on where you live. But uh, So this is kind of representative of uh, if you're going to be putting fertilizer in your planted aquarium and you're using distilled water, and we're going to see if it kind of beats the whole purpose of using distilled water. So we should see an algae increase in the remineralized distilled water and even possibly in the distilled water. So we're going to add two milliliters each of this, and that's way more than the amount that you would be putting in your fish tank. And we'll see what happens. And then once we see the algae bloom either I increase or stay the same, we're going to be adding Excel to one of these containers and seeing if that actually removes the algae because Excel is naturally an algicide, which is glutaraldehyde, but this is more so used as a carbon source for planted tanks to help your plants grow. So we're going to add the fertilizer and then we're going to come back in about a week and take a look. Okay, it has only been a few days since I have added the fertilizer to all of these containers and the results are already in. Uh, there's no need to continue any longer. Uh, I don't think it's going to get much worse than this, honestly. But now we can see that the remineralized distilled container is looking almost just as bad as the tap and the filtered tap containers. Now we are going to be adding the Excel to the tap water. But before we do that, let's have a little bit discussion about what you can take away from this and what this means. So everybody struggles with algae in their aquariums at one point or another. But if you continuously are struggling with algae, it's usually as a result of maintenance. So imagine that if your tank was evaporating water and you were just topping it off instead of doing water changes more regularly. Uh, imagine that you had a container of water and that water had uh, maybe a quarter inch layer of sand in the bottom. And then you basically poured that into the tank. What that sand is representative of is the minerals, the nitrates, the phosphates, the heavy metals, and the silica all in your tap water. So you have a quarter inch layer of that in the bottom, you pour it in the tank, that's evap you, you more water evaporates out of the tank, and then you come back with another container of that water with the sand in the bottom, you pour it in there, and the water evaporates. Eventually what you're gonna have is a half a tank or, or more filled with sand because everything that's in your tap water uh, the total to dissolve solids, TDS, that does not evaporate out of the water. All of that just continues to build up in your tank until, until it gets up to toxic levels. So what we've basically done here is kind of shown uh, these are much higher levels than you would see in a normal aquarium, but we've added, it's pretty much the same thing as adding fertilizer and nitrogen and the nitrates that build up in your tank from your fish poop and all that stuff. Um, all of that is, is pretty normal. We didn't exaggerate it that much. But over time, if you were to not do regular water changes, you're going to get algae buildup just like this because all those levels are going to be exceeding in your tank. So what we can take away from this also is that if you have a planted aquarium and you are feeding it fertilizer to grow the plants, you can see right here, it's very clear that it's using remineralized distilled water is not going to prevent algae growth not at all because you're basically putting in the tank what you're trying to avoid with remineralized distilled water the benefit that you're going to get from remineralized distilled water is just the fact that you know what's going into that water and you don't have to worry about anything that could be toxic for sensitive creatures such as shrimp um, now there's nothing wrong with reusing distilled water or reverse osmosis water or even rainwater if it's sterilized um, depending on how you collect the rainwater and everything but still uh, absolutely nothing wrong with it. It's actually highly recommended. But if you are going to top off your tank with water, you should be using either uh, plain old distilled water, rainwater, or reverse osmosis water. Pure water with zero TDS, so that you're not building up those things in your tank. Uh, when you're doing water changes, you want to use remineralized distilled water, or remineralized reverse osmosis, or, re or remineralized rainwater. So. Now what we're going to do is add the Excel to the tap water and we're going to come back in whatever amount of time it takes and see if that algae actually goes away on its own compared to the rest. There is one thing I'm going to also mention is the distilled water, even though I added everything to it, still has absolutely nothing growing on it whatsoever. And there should be algae growing in that right now. 
after adding the nitrin, nitrogen and the fertilizer, there's no reason why it wouldn't take hold. The only reason I can think of right now is the fact that it has, uh, the cells that I had added to that probably have died because it's been added to pure water. There's absolutely nothing for them to survive on whatsoever. So what we're gonna do is at the same time, we're gonna take a new bottle of distilled water. We're gonna infuse some algae into that water and add the fertilizer and the nitrate, nitrogen. And we're gonna come back at the same time as we look at the tap water after we add the Excel and we'll see what happens to that. Okay, we're back. It's been about four days since I've added the Excel to the tap water and the filtered tap water. Uh, over here, the remineralized distilled water, I did not add anything to that. And over here on the right, this is basically the tap water experiment over again. And this is just to see if there is any algae in my tap water. And I'm just doing this over again because it's not science unless you can repeat it. So basically what I've done with that is add one milliliter of the fish tank fertilizer and two milliliters of the nitrogen. Uh, did not put any algae spores into that. Obviously that would be the whole purpose. And then the distilled water over here, what I did is I added one milliliter of the fish tank fertilizer and two milliliters of the nitrogen and took some algae cells that was infused into the remineralized distilled water where I did not add the Excel and put it in there just like it did to start off this whole experiment. And so far I'm not seeing anything happen in the distilled water at all. Um, I'm gonna leave this for a little while longer, but I think the reason why algae is not really taking hold, just like the last time, is because there's no minerals in it at all, or, or I should say hardly any. Uh, so let's talk about the Excel. So over here, the tap water and the filter tap water both had Excel added. The only difference is, is the filter tap water, I only added four times the recommended dosage. And the reason why I did it that way is because when you're adding Excel to a fish tank, in some cases you're adding it every day, sometimes twice a day, and it's easy to build up the amount that's in your tank to four times the recommended dosage. And in this case, the half a gallon is about 2 point, or 0.25 milliliters that I've actually added to it. So it's about three drops. And over here, the tap water, I added 16 times the recommended dosage, and you can clearly see it's worked. Um, the algae is basically dying at this point. It's like this uh, uh, very light banana peel color I did see a slight difference about a day after I added it to the filter tap water and the color variance was just a little bit darker than that of the tap water, but now that it's been two more days, the algae has basically started to come back and it looks pretty much the same as the remineralized distilled water where before there was, it's, I didn't record this, but it actually was a, a, a noticeable difference in color. So that's what you can expect by using Excel. Excel will work if you continue to use it, if you want to use it as an algicide, um, but you have to keep using it on a daily basis, unless you overdose your tank, which is probably not a good idea, but that's what would happen if you did. So that's about it for this video, I think. I'm gonna probably do a quick segment at the end uh, just to see if anything happens to these two containers here. But for the most part, that's it, and by now, I'm sorry this video is so long. You could probably, you're probably sick of hearing my voice at this point. I know I am. So I'm gonna put a conclusion at the end of this video as well in text. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.